This is Twit. While we're on IoT, can I can I suggest one? Yeah, because I, I want to hear Amy. Ta- uh, Amy, Stacy, what am I saying? Amy, talk about this. Um, the puffs of air, line eighty-two. Have you gone into this yet, Stacy? Here's the video. Uh, let going me show down you. To let me show you Google's little signals. Oh yes, little signals. Here you go. Watch the video. We'll all watch and learn. At Google, we like to rehearse the future. Did, wait a minute. Did she call it Google? <laughs> She's got Leave an it accent. Be. Leave uh, it be. Let, let, let me hear it again. At Google, we like to re- Google rehearse the Google? future. Google. In this collaboration Google? with Matt Project Office. We have explored how technology can support us in the background of our day-to-day lives. A little Irish? Oh, she's Scottish. Through the lens That's of ambient Google. computing, Google. Okay. we're imagining Google. new ways to interact with technology, using less of our attention and allowing us to have moments of calm. The calming accent. Mm-hmm. Little Signals is a family of unassuming but charming objects that share notifications and information by engaging with our senses in more nuanced ways. Wait a minute. Little unassuming objects <laughs> that engage your attention? This, this is for the company that brought you Google Glass. So what? It can't be is unassuming this, if it's is engaging. This, right? Is this Blue Sky? Are they gonna? Are they doing it? Or, well, let's listen. No, no. This is this has been around oh, it's, for it's a while. This play. is the whole concept oh, has? of ambient information delivery. Yes, but keep going. This is a lovely using sound movement and visual cues we can subtly perceive. A soft shadow, a friendly tap. What? A reassuring like sound, a subtle indicator. I'd never, <laughs> I'd never hear any of this, never see any of it. A gentle motion. <laughs> they use familiar patterns to calmly convey information and keep us in the loop. Live. We're all in the Google Live. Gentle nudges at the right time in the right way. <laughs> Dialing up only when Okay, necessary. if you're just listening, it is not nearly as hysterical. There are little objects These tapping little on things. These signals thought starters of how we can foster new behaviors and relationships with our oh, technology. Look at that. I turned it upside down. Working in harmony with the objects we already love in a little way. Beep. <laughs> So is this so Google this is, So there's a whole design philosophy. It's called This is what I want to hear, design. Stacey, on this. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so we've had people. So this has been all the way back. So all the way back to like 2010, 2008, we were seeing people develop connected objects. Like, so one of the first ones that I recall hearing about was like a an umbrella stand that would just light up softly if rain was expected. So as you walked out the door, your your umbrella stand would glow Don't and you'd be like, oh, me. I should take an umbrella. Um, and that, that was one of the, like, the, it, and there were lots of ideas around products like this. And most of them have failed. Um, Goodnight Lamp was a wonderful one that is, you can kind of, it's been developed into other things, which is like, just by turning on a light, it would share it would turn on a light somewhere else with like a connected other person and they would just know that you were home or that it was like a way to connect with people from far away. And the idea here was that you wouldn't have a screen, you would have some object or device in your home that would give you some sort of indication that you could pay attention to in a way that was not like a notification screaming at you. And these objects really fetishize things like light, sound, motion as a way to get your attention. Um, and a lot of them are nice, but... So look, you can build them yourself yeah. using an Arduino and uh, they have the 3D printer uh, models. So these are the three things we saw, which is the thing you push down. I could use it for my father to remember to take his pill and then plop down. Well, the that was an interesting one. It has a little, it's a little, it looks like the hands of a clock, but instead of being the hands of a clock, it taps on your medicine bottle. But okay. It taps on the medicine bottle, too. but how, yeah. how audible is that? You know, you tap it on the medicine bottle. Well, the idea around the, them is they, they come to your attention when you need them. And so in that case, mm-hmm. probably you were looking at something like light triggered the sensor to Google, indicate that like light and time, mm-hmm. for example. So opening your medicine cabinet gave you that 
notification, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm okay. sorry. I'm trying to. The, it no, said, it's, it said it, there, and there's launch experiment, but all it's doing is showing me that same video again. So I wanted to see what the experiment. Oh, here. Your explanation helps. And you state. see them. You see these things getting built into like people like tying their Phillips Hue lights to various pieces of information and <coughs> sorry, lights changing colors to like tell you something has happened. And but and that's just ambient information delivery. And it's really popular. And it's actually, I've set up a bunch of them in my home and it's actually mm -hmm. quite nice. Oh, so to, tell us what you, I like, like the well, idea tell us what you like have. This. Yeah. I like the idea well, so of this, I kinda, but I feel like I would struggle with, with catching. Sure. Know, what, so so here's a little, back in the day. here's a little air so, thing. It interacts with this pulses of air move nearby items to attract attention. So it'll blow, wiggle or spin. Mm -hmm. That's an so example. like something like this, you could use it for something that's not imperative that you notice it right away. Okay. But that's like right. okay. a good example would be something like quitting time, actually. Okay. So here's like it could this way, if it's five o'clock and usually you want to be like you want to have a reminder to yourself to get up and stop working. Right. That okay. could start blowing around five o'clock and you could be working and you'd notice it and you'd be like, oh, OK, yeah, it's time to go. But it's less intrusive than like yeah. a bell going off. Right. I like this um, one. OK, this is kind of interesting. This is this one's called movement and mm -hmm. seven pegs that graphically represent information like a calendar a timer through their height and motion. The pegs work individually or as a group and are tapped for simple input. That's really interesting. I mean, they're just, yeah, these are very interesting. You know, these are super Things don't fun. have to shout and at like, you. They, they can just hint at as normal environmental things do. Mm -hmm. And like this, this, this one with the haptic feedback is fun. Like I've seen things like that. Um, I've seen projects like for bicyclists, like little vests that people wear with haptic feedback, where mm -hmm. the closer a car gets to you on a bicycle, the the more the haptic feedback happens, like the harder or the faster the percussive mm -hmm. motion would happen. So you'd feel the car coming up behind you. So you'd know it was there, but it wouldn't, it would build slowly, presumably. Or if it built too fast, you'd figure it out and you'd be like, I should swerve. Oops, sorry. This one's really interesting. Oops, I should swerve. Tap makes use of surfaces. This is the one that was tapping on the medicine bottle to create sounds that act as notifications. A stronger tap means more pressing news. So you mm -hmm. you could now you can download these as as little there's little zip files. Is this a script? Uh, it's an STP. Uh oh, he's gonna make one now. Here I comes. think we could experiment with little signals. You could, yeah. He's firing you come up the here and walk you through how to make the air object. Yeah, this doesn't look so quite so. <laughs> you need a 12 volt computer fan, an Arduino, a transistor, a resistor. So She's these are dying. these are do it yourself projects. Yeah. And like the air blowing might be fun. Like, let's say you've got a sensor tied to your plant that is like when it needs water. What if you start seeing the leaves blow and you're like, oh, that means it needs water. Hey, I think hey, that's cool. Me? So instead of having a Every boxing glove that hits me, Stacy, <laughs> <laughs> you could have something that blows one of these in my ear. And an urgent tapping. Just blows in tap, my ear. Tap, tap on your forehead. Yeah. <laughs> Boop. I thought we solved that with ant. Can have a Just booper. Win. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, so I'm trying to find a, a replacement. Uh, yeah. I would like to build one of these. This is cool. Maybe Burke can build us some of these. Because right, I mean, there's some soldering. Popular. It's yeah. yeah. It's super. Like, and there's code. These, so you can write your own code. Huh. It's neat. Wow. And I thought we'd we'd have this sort of thing in more places, but until we have a truly open kind of format for communicating information, and then the end result, like the the uh, what's it called, the execution of a puff of air or whatever, there's no way to build something like that that's really universal. So you get these like single use products that are real gimmicky feeling, and it's kind of sad. Why does this look like Visual Basic or something? This is JavaScript, but it, what it looks like you could do, um, for it's got an API. You could query a weather service for a forecast. So that's what this code does. They uh, they get the forecast, and then they react to the forecast by doing something. Uh, you know, depending on which 
yeah. thing you're connected to. I used to. to have a light in my closet that if it was below freezing, it would turn blue. So when yeah. in the morning, when I went into my closet, it would be blue. Oh, if it that's was below neat. Freezing. Smart. Oh. Can it in turn do something else? If I hit, if I hit the red thing down, yes. does it, you know, send my doctor a notification? Yes, he does. Yeah, pills or sure. It's all programmable. So in this case, if you set it, uh, to something, to whatever the trigger is, it'll turn the fan on. It'll blow on you. <laughs> I might find that irritating. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the air object. So there's there's code for all different kinds of objects. This is actually the one I'd be most interested in is this little tap object. Yeah. That's the one I want to play with. Plus, well, so it seems to operate on two axes. Yeah. You go down and in. Oh, this is the same one. This is the air here one. Oh well, I'm gonna have to. I want. Maybe we should build one of these. It'd be kind of fun. Build it, program it. Yeah, have and fun. then give control of it to Stacy. Yeah, on the set. And we then, could. Yes, then let me have it. And, so, and we, actually, all you need is it's on the table, and when you start to say something bad, she just taps like a like an insistent ant. Yeah, <laughs> and I could put a little yes. finger on it, like and it's like it's tapping. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to there's a site uh, called comtech.com. It'll talk about some of these sort of things in other places that you see this developed. I've had a person on the podcast talk about this. So here's a calm it's, tea it's kettle, nice. a calm office window, a laboratory sign, a calm Roomba. Yeah, I like this idea. I mean, it. I mean, there's a reason why these alerts coming from your assistants and your phone are loud and annoying. I mean... Otherwise, you might miss it, <laughs> right? Well, this would be very permissioned. This is, I'm going to pay attention to you at, a, at a, an agreed-upon level. I'll, 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 when I see the plant, um, plant's leaves going like that, then that's fine. I've, I've agreed to that, and, I, and I'll do something, and that's that. It's nice and simple. It's easy. I like that, that idea. It's not intrusive. It's not it's loud. Cool. It's not yeah. in your face. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you, Stacy, for explaining it. Yeah. Should we build some stuff? If you want fun? to know more about this, uh, Amber Case is the woman who you should follow. And you have some, like, where did you get that blue light? How did you, did you build that yourself or? Oh, I programmed a Philips Hue using Ift. Oh, duh. <laughs> of course. That was yeah. hard. Um, no, I've done stuff I like programmed that. programmed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Sarcastic. Kevin, Kevin actually did something. He programmed a LifeX bulb um, tied to the price of Bitcoin, which is, again, another example of doing something like this that's calmer calm calm very calm i like 